Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is the three wise men of Lean. Muda, Mura and Muri. Let's just pop this up here as a heading. It's the three wise men. Now, most people, when they're doing lean implementation, they've all heard, most people have heard of Muda. So let's just pop that one up there. So everybody understands this one usually. Muda in Japanese, in English, it's the seven wastes. Everyone's very comfortable with that and everyone's chasing the seven wastes away. However, people misunderstand. If you don't do the other two in that list, this doesn't work properly. Mura and Muri. Let's put those up there. So let's have a look. Mura, what is this thing? Well, it's on evenness evenness. Muri. What's this? It's overburden. Overburden or asking someone to do a work content that's unreasonable. So it's, it's about asking unreasonable things of your machines and your people and your factory etc. And typically Everyone chases the seven wastes away. So let's just put the seven wastes up there. Everyone's chasing these things. Don't forget, by the way, these are about your product. They are about the material flowing through your factory. Don't try and apply these to people. They do not apply to people. Okay, so let's have a look over, over processing. Um, Overproduction. You're not waiting. Inventory. Too much of the stuff. Transport. Transport and motion. Now everyone's chasing these seven wastes and they all think that they understand it. However, lots of people apply this to their people. Lean is not about efficiency. It's about flow, and therefore it's about making huge amounts of money. Use these seven wastes to measure how fast an order flows, how fast your material moves, what's happening to your material, then you'll get the most out of lean. However, if you really want the seven wastes to go away, You've got to deal with these two, and you've got to deal with these two first. You won't make these go if you have unevenness or overburden. And if you want a great book to see this in action, The Gold Mine is a fantastic book to look at because The Gold Mine, in it, it's a storybook, it's about a lean transformation, and in it, the first thing that the, the, the guru does when he goes into the factory, what's the first thing he looks at? First thing he actually looks at is overburden. He makes it go away. Then he sorts out the unevenness. And then once he's dealt with these two, then he starts dealing with this. But only after he's dealt with these two. So let's let's talk about unevenness or overburden. So this is the gold mine, by the way. This is Fred Frederick Ballet, B-A-L-L-E, if you want to go and find it. It is a great book to show you how to do proper lean implementation. So let's look at these two. Unevenness, typically, what are we talking about? Unevenness, this is often about 
demand. The demand is doing this. One of the first things you have to do is flatten that demand out. Because of course, if you look at this, how do you, how do you deal with these peaks? Imagine that flowing through your factory. I mean, imagine what flow's gotta look like. Yeah, you, you, you've got no flow at all, then you, you need to suddenly make uh, 20, 30% more. Where'd you get that capacity from? Well, often, of course, what you do is you put on overtime, try and produce more per shift. Maybe you take maintenance routines out of your equipment because you don't have time to do that anymore. You've got to put more pressure on the equipment. What are you doing? Because you've got this, you tend to do this. Yeah, so you will definitely put more pressure on your equipment and your people and you'll create overburden. Overburden in the book, by the way, the, the gold mine, what is overburden in the book? It's basically parts that don't fit correctly. It's not that they can't get them to fit, but they can't just put them together as the, as the process was originally planned. So what they're doing is they've got little special tools, they're doing a little bit of extra work, maybe a little bit of rework, bending things, etc. And of course, what that's doing? It's putting extra pressure on the operator. The operator's getting the job done, but maybe they're only producing 80% of the target, things like that. Maybe they're having to work hard, stress their arms and things, because they're doing things that, that weren't designed into the process. You're creating overburden. And in the book, this is the first thing that he gets rid of. And then he flattens the demand. He makes the demand completely even through the manufacturing process. It's one of the most simple things you can ever do. And all he basically does is he calculates the average demand for each product. And then he puts that into a plan. And he says, let's do the average every single day. Now, sometimes you can't do it daily. Yeah, but what you should try and do, initially, you should try and do it monthly. So you make exactly the same quantity every month. If you can break that down into smaller batches, you should then try and do the same quantity weekly. And finally, if you can do it, the same quantity daily, so that every day is identical. Now in the book, he does this in a few simple pages. I've marked some pages here just to show you. Look, what does he do? Well, there, he calculates average demand. Let's have a look, the, um, the STR product at the top there, weekly demand, it says 100. Then next to it, it says daily demand, it says 20. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna make 20 of those every day. Now, a little bit later in the book, once he's come up with that standard plan, Here's the Kanban design. Look how even the Kanban is. Look at the way these Kanbans appear at the same time interval across, the, this is across a day by the way, so this is minutes across a day. But literally, there is the same demand on the production system, even every single day. He's removed overburden, now he's removed unevenness. Now just think how easy this becomes to plan. Every day's the same. You've got the same people in the same place. You've got the same material in the same quantities in the same place. Imagine how well the, the parts feeding department can optimize their process. They know exactly how much to deliver. It's exactly the right place. It's exactly the right time. There is no change every single day. Now I know what people say to me, yeah, but we have orders that appear and we can't plan them, we don't know that they're coming. That's fine, you will get that. But what you want to achieve, you want to achieve something like this, an even plan for four out of your five days. The craziness, the randomness, will only be for 20% of what you make. What you have to do is isolate the, the repetitiveness. Take the unevenness out of four days 
and make them completely repetitive. And I mean completely repetitive. No variability, no changes. Just same orders every day, same way. Four days completely repetitive. Day five, well, in day five, that's where you can stick the chaos if you want. So day five is the random orders, random quantities, things that you don't know what's coming, things that get ordered in very low volumes that you can never predict. And then what you've got is four days, just work like clockwork. And the chaos is isolated into day five. What most people do, they allow this to sit in these days. It infects the, the, the way you work completely. This chaos infects all the, the repetition that's really there. You can't see any repetition. And now every day you make it up as you go along. What you need to do is deal with unevenness, get repetition. Then you can have the right people in the right place, the right machines in the right place. Maintenance routines always happening as planned every time. And of course, if you do that, the machines work brilliantly. You don't have to have processes checking and rework that shouldn't be there. You're not overproducing to deal with these peaks and troughs. Um, you've got the right amount of inventory because the place is flowing, you don't have waiting. The transport can be at a minimum and completely planned. So you can plan the flow of material and the motion completely and you can eliminate the seven wastes because everything is repetitive. This is crucial to lean. You have to deal with Moora and Moori first and then the seven wastes can be destroyed and you can make pots of money. Because lean, when you get it right and you make the orders flow as fast as possible, is about making pots of money. The three wise men of lean.